Mesopotamia, a land defined by the twin rivers of the Tigris and Euphrates, is home to the modern-day nation of Iraq, which has been the center of international conflict during the 21st century. But the land has a long and rich history of wealthy empires that carved out nation-states from the deserts of the region going back millennia. Often cited as the birthplace of civilization, Mesopotamia was home to some of the earliest domestication of crops and livestock in the world, so it's no surprise it was also home to one of the oldest empires of human history. The Akkadian Empire, as it is known today, stretched through modern-day Iraq into parts of Syria and Turkey and dispatched its armies into modern-day Kuwait and Iran. So who were the Akkadians, and what allowed them to build an empire when other civilizations were struggling to expand beyond single settlements? And what caused this first world empire to dissolve and disappear into the desert? Let's take a journey through the rivers of time as we explore the Akkadian Empire. Reports of the Akkadian Empire date back all the way to references in the Torah's book of Genesis, which means that by the time early Jewish writers penned their religious stories, Akkad was a well-known Mesopotamian state. Archaeological attempts to locate the empire's capital of Akkad, however, have all turned up nothing. What archaeologists do know is that the empire's history began sometime in the 24th century BCE and disappeared about 200 years later. Important rulers and, oh boy, are we going to have fun mispronouncing these names, included Sargon, Manish, Dushu, Sharkali Shari, and Shu Turul. The founder of the empire, Sargon, used military annexation to expand his city-state beyond a single settlement. And the later rulers, Remush and Manishtushu, would expand further on Sargon's progress by annexing more territory, along with dealing with intense domestic revolts. Mysteries abound over why the Akkadian Empire collapsed, with sources both historical and mythological. But the likeliest scenario is that the ruling dynasty simply could no longer control its population. This pairs well with geological evidence of an intense drought during the time of the empire's disappearance, when increased salinization of the soil made large-scale agriculture practically impossible. The government of the Akkadians had a strong partnership with Akkadian religion, so strong that a ruler could only become Etsy, or ruler, by undergoing a ceremonial marriage to the goddess Inanna to represent a marriage between politics and religion. So I suppose the separation of church and state had no place in Mesopotamia. This ritualistic marriage would carry on well beyond the Akkadians, as later Mesopotamian civilizations continued the practice well past the Akkadian decline. Under Sargon, the title of Ensi would change to be used as a title for regional governors who oversaw individual cities, while imperial rulers assumed the new title of Sar Kasati, or Lord of the Universe which is sort of unfair if it's only for an earthbound ruler. In order to maintain control, however, of both state and religious affairs, the Akkadian emperors would often appoint their own daughters as head priestesses to cement their ceremonial control over heaven and earth and to unceremoniously marry those daughters to lower nobles to establish a connected kinship among the Ensi to promote legitimacy over the throne. 
The Akkadian Empire's domestic economy was the product of geographic diversity, with the rain heavy north and the irrigation dependent south. Akkadian farmers were able to cultivate a cornucopia of crops. Make that one point for alliteration. Before salinization in the south ruined Akkadian soil, farmers mostly cultivated early strains of wheat and barley, with those in the north mostly raising livestock like sheep and goats to produce wool, meat, and dairy. While the Akkadian Empire at its height had a surplus in grain, they lacked any major sources of metals like tin or copper, and relied on international trade for most necessary items to expand their civilization. This may explain why Akkadian empires invaded modern-day Lebanon for lumber and modern-day Kuwait and Iran for metal. It's even likely that the Akkadians traded with merchants from as far away as modern-day India and Pakistan to get the materials they needed to build their empire. Akkadian art emphasized images of imperial rulers, noble warriors, and heinous revolutionaries. Akkadian nobility likely used art as a medium for propaganda to advance their image, cement their control, and demonize opposition, something that cultures from around the world and throughout history have become really good at. I'm looking at you, Soviet Union. Even language became a medium for art in the Akkadian Empire, as nobility who spoke Akkadian often used the language to dominate the lower classes who mostly spoke Sumerian. Sumerian poetry, however, shined during the era, with the poetess and priestess Ene Duana being one of the oldest named women in history, who used her poetry as subtle satire against unethical Akkadian rulers, mostly because they rebelled against her father's court. The relationship between politics and religion would expand far beyond Mesopotamia following the collapse of the Akkadian Empire. Several cultures throughout history in North Africa, Europe, and the Middle East depended on some form of intermarriage between a ruler and the divine to maintain control of their people. Akkadian rulers' use of art for propaganda to protect their supposedly divine right to rule would also export into future empires, with several countries even today using art as a means of maintaining political status quo. While the Akkadians lasted a relatively short time, less than 200 years, the empire's founder, Sargon, would become the standard for how a man and emperor should conduct himself for centuries after his death, almost like a Mesopotamian Charlemagne. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos on historical cultures, hit the subscribe button, and let us know in the comments what culture from Middle Eastern history you want to see on this channel next.